The collaborative effort between Poland's Obram and the UK's BAE systems led to the creation of the PL-01 concept tank. The project's inception occurred in 2013, with the unveiling of a mock-up to the public that same year. As of now, the tank remains a technological showcase, with initial plans aiming for a fully functional prototype by 2016. The intention was to address potential needs of the Polish army, with speculation even suggesting the tank could be in service by 2018. However, the PL-01 ultimately didn't progress beyond the prototype phase. Presently, the Polish army employs approximately 900 main battle tanks, encompassing both the native PT-9120 and the German Leopard 2, while around 400 T-72 MBTs are held in storage. The original intent was for the PL-01 to be considered for export once production began. In 2010, another prototype light tank called the Anders was introduced in Poland, serving as a foundation for various armored vehicles like infantry fighting vehicles, fire support platforms, and anti-tank missile carriers. The PL-01 could be seen as an upgraded iteration of the Anders. Derived from the Swedish CV90120 T light tank, the PL-01 shares resemblances with the Anders, both utilizing the same platform. The tank's weight is stated at 35 tons, though some sources speculate the production version could weigh between 45 to 50 tons. The Polish tank was designed with modular protection, featuring multi-layer ceramic aramid armor. Damaged armor modules could be swiftly replaced in field conditions, with options to upgrade to more advanced armor. The front armor, combined with add-ons, aimed to defend against 30 to 40 mm armor-piercing rounds, while all-around protection could withstand 14.5 mm armor-piercing rounds. This level of protection aligns the vehicle more closely with modern light tanks than traditional main battle tanks. The hull was engineered to endure explosions equivalent to 10 kg of TNT anywhere underneath, integrating an active protection system, automatic fire suppression, and NBC protection. The tank's unmanned turret stores ammunition in a separate compartment with blowout panels. Armed with a 120mm gun featuring an autoloader, the tank was capable of firing standard NATO 120mm tank ammunition, even launching anti-tank guided missiles like regular rounds. Approximately 40 rounds were planned for the main gun, with 12 to 16 readily available. It remained uncertain if the autoloader could be replenished on the battlefield. Additionally, a version with a 105mm gun was intended for export. A coaxial 7.62mm machine gun and a remotely controlled weapon station, equipped with another 7.62mm machine gun or alternatively a 12. 7mm heavy machine gun or 40mm automatic grenade launcher, were incorporated. The tank's advanced fire control system included a hunter-killer capability, complemented by a battlefield management system. The PL-01 incorporated stealth technology, featuring thermal camouflage for reduced detectability by thermal sensors. The tank's exterior was purportedly covered with radio wave-absorbing material. The angular design elements might have aimed to minimize radar cross-section or purely convey a futuristic appearance. With a three-person crew, commander, gunner, and driver, the tank allowed entry and exit through a rear hatch, which also facilitated ammunition loading. For additional soldiers could replace ammunition within the hull. Built upon the chassis of the established Swedish CV-90 IFV, the PL-01 positioned its engine compartment at the hull's front. The tank was intended to be propelled by a diesel engine producing around 1,000 horsepower, potentially of German origin, paired with an automatic transmission. Projected cross-country speed stood at 50 km per hour, with an optional deep wading kit available for the PL-01.